We're going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a, a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all of Nazareth uh, and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not nece necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is all, almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, uh, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road and while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had, he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. And I invite you to please be seated. As we began, we, uh, we are in the season of Easter, and it's a time, a time when we continue to hear all these, these resurrection appearances, these appearances that are recorded in our gospels, of Jesus, Jesus appearing to his disciples and to those followers, sightings of Jesus that remind us, remind you and me, that this God of ours is not dead, but this God of ours is alive, and this God of ours is loose in the world, a God that not even death can keep down. Uh, these resurrection stories remind us that God, God is loose and using, using people like you, and me, you and me to do some pretty amazing things. In our story today, you heard the story. We had two men who are walking, walking down the road. Uh, they've just witnessed Jesus' death along with, with everyone else, right? And I wonder what that was like. They saw, they saw how Jesus would have been beaten and, and died this painful death. Uh, they saw it all, and I imagine it was, it was horrifying, and so as they're walking away from Jerusalem, I imagine they're lamenting over all they had seen, and, and they're on their way home. They're on their way to this place called Emmaus. And there, there along the road to Emmaus, they encounter a stranger. And this stranger is seemingly oblivious, oblivious to everything that's gone on. This stranger asks what they're talking about there on the road. I imagine the two of them looked at each other and looked at the stranger and, and wanted to say, what rock did you just crawl out from under? Huh? How could you not know? 
How could you not know what's happened? And after they explained what's strange is this, uh, this unidentified man did something I imagine they thought was kind of different, a little, a little strange. He started talking about the story of their faith. And he interpreted the story of their faith and how this Jesus was a fulfillment of all they had learned and believed and as, as though his death was all part of this great story of their faith. And as they listened, I imagine they were a little intrigued, huh? And they were drawn so much so to him that they invited him to dinner. And there the Bible says, as he broke the bread, it says their eyes were opened. Their eyes were opened, and this, this man who was in their midst, this was Jesus right there. In their midst, they have the risen Christ. They realize that this one, this one who was with them is the one whom we proclaim on Easter. Help me here. Christ is risen. He is risen oh, you can do better than that. Christ is risen. He is risen there you go. That's better, huh? And as they realized that this was Jesus, huh? It says that their hearts burned, huh? Their hearts burned. Something within them burned. The Bible says, if you will, they had heartburn, huh? huh? And we're not talking about the kind of heartburn that comes from a spicy burrito from Taco Bell, huh? Folks, their hearts burned. Here's what I believe. I believe with all my heart that you can't be a person of faith without having a little heartburn. Without having a little heartburn. People of faith, uh, just like those two people walking down the road to Emmaus, being people of faith means that you and I, we will experience heartburn. We should experience heartburn. If you really come to know the story of Jesus, if you read the story of his life, if you, if you watch who he hung out with, if you watch how, they, how he cared for the sick and how he was concerned about justice for the oppressed, choosing peace over war, lifting up the outcast, if you follow this Jesus around and you live in this world of ours, you cannot, you cannot help but have a healthy dose of of heartburn now and then. Our hearts burn for those in need. Huh? Folks, that's why as a church, uh, you may wonder what's all this habitat stuff about today. Well, as a church, last week we spent our worship time thinking about our brothers and sisters in Africa who battle malaria because we're people who have this heartburn. That's why this week, over 80 of our confirmation students on Wednesday evening with their parents went and packed meals. Huh? They packed meals that are, are going to be sent all the way over to Haiti to feed our brothers and sisters there. Huh? That's why we collect things like diapers with a diaper drive. That's why we offer space for free tax service. That's why we support the Jefferson High School food shelf. That's why many of you volunteer at our, the Douglas County food shelf or the once a month food drop. It's because we are people who have heartburn. Folks, that's why today we spend some time talking about the need for decent, affordable housing right here in Alexandria, huh? This is what we people of faith do. Our hearts burn and we hope, like those two men on the road, that our eyes would be opened, huh? Open maybe just a little bit wider, even wider to the needs of our community, huh? The needs of our world. As people of faith, we are people who have heartburn. In just a couple minutes here, we're going to play a video, and it's all about Habitat. It's about the mission and ministry of Habitat for Humanity, and I admit it's a little bit of a lengthy video, but I think it tells the story really well, really well of the important work of Habitat, not only just here in Douglas County, but around the world. Huh? It's one of those organizations that helps us helps us respond to that burn, that heartburn that God places inside each one of us. So sit back and watch.